Welcome to Louisiana Business Spotlight. I'm Jeff Cruer. Great program lined up for you today. We're going to be visiting with the mayor of the city of Cantor, Benzon, talking about some exciting projects he's going to be working on over the next four years. Lots to get into, but let's start with some of the top business stories we're following right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Louisiana lost 1,600 jobs in February, and that's compared to the year before. That's bringing total employment in the state to 1.9 million approximately. Now, the number of jobs in the state fell by 0.08% during the period, and that's according to preliminary figures released by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Economist Lauren Scott said Louisiana is struggling for two main reasons. One, oil and gas prices still haven't rebounded. And secondly, a number of large-scale petrochemical construction projects in Baton Rouge and Lake Charles are winding down. On March 21st, oil and gas companies bid on about 1% of the Gulf of Mexico water bottom offered in what the Trump administration has been calling the biggest offshore lease sale in U.S. history. The government says uh, 33 companies made $124.8 million in high bids on 148 offshore tracks. And that's up slightly from August when you had 27 companies submitting $121.1 million in high bids on 90 tracks. The sale was the first since 1983 to offer all available Gulf acreage. Union Pacific Railroad will complete $87 million in Louisiana rail improvements this year including a major upgrade at the port of Greater Baton Rouge. Now, the rail carrier said that it has announced more than 500 million in Louisiana rail projects since 2012, tracking with the state's industrial boom. Now, Union Pacific plans to spend 3.3 billion across its 23 state network in this upcoming year. Avondale Shipyard, we've been waiting on some news there. Now, it would be turned into a privately owned multimodal shipping terminal under a joint venture that was identified at a recent Port of New Orleans board meeting. HRE New Orleans is a joint venture of T. Parker Host Incorporated that's based in Norfolk, Virginia, and Hillco Global of Northbrook, Illinois. Now, the dock board passed a resolution supporting the venture's redevelopment of the site, and we have our fingers crossed and hope this might finally be a redevelopment of Avondale that will work. All right, folks, when we come back, let's talk to the mayor of the city of Kenner, Ben Zahn, with us next right here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and some big election results. We're going to be talking about them and where the next four years goes right here in the city of Kenner with the mayor, Ben Zahn. And Mr. Mayor, how you doing? Good. Feels good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. You know, campaigning is tough, isn't it? I mean, you got to really uh, put all your energies into it, don't you? Absolutely. It, it takes a lot, um, but it's, it's for a better cause because we know that, you know, and this was a little bit different. We're going in, we only had like a little bit over a year to prove some things that we could do. Usually had those four years. This was a little bit tighter time frame, but I think we, I think we showed the people of Kenner uh, working together that we can actually produce some things for them. I mean, it's great validation after just a little over a year. Right. Yeah, and, and the last race was a little bit tougher. Yeah. Obviously, we had um, three sitting council people, one civic activist um, that led to a runoff, um, who I'm very good friends with today, Greg Carroll, and we moved forward. And I think that's what's important, myself and Greg Carroll working forward with the rest of the council. So when you went around campaigning, what were you hearing from the people? I heard that people were happy. They were mm -hmm. happy with what they had, um, what we had done. They were happy with the direction that the city of Kenner was going in, police-wise, fire-wise, council, some of the council, and also um, my administration. So, when you were visiting with people and campaigning and going out there, any surprises? Any things that you heard from people that was sort well, of shock you? And, and you know, some people said, "Why are you even?" worried about campaigning because you don't really have the, you know, the true usual opponents that really mm -hmm. work hard. But I thought it was a good time, obviously campaign, <laughs> but also get reconnected with some of the issues that were out there. We stayed connected throughout that year, but mm -hmm. we also still wanted to hear it directly from the people. It's nothing right. like hearing directly from the people. So it was an opportunity I took to be at the doors. I knocked doors just like any other campaign right. 
and made sure that people were happy with the city of Kenner. Were they surprised to see you at the door? Yeah, they the were. Mayor? <laughs> they, they, they were because they're like, really, what are you? And, and mm -hmm. some people didn't realize we had a um, we had a race, a mayor's right. race. And I'm like, yes, it's a mayor's race. There's no, numerous other races, and it's just a it's a good opportunity to get out there and reconnect with them. Well, tremendous uh, victory. So congratulations on that. Now, also some changes in the council. Let's talk about that. Yes, we um, we have. Without opposition was Brian Brennan. He was elected without oppos opposition for the new seat um, vacated by Dominic Epistata. Um, District 4 has a new face, George Brannigan, who happens to very good, be a very good friend of mine. Um, Lenny did a good job, but I believe George would do a very good job also, and he is a friend. Uh, District 3 has a new face, um, Glenn Hayes, um, longtime friend and also business person, banker. Um, District 2, no opposition for Mike Segur, another very good friend. Greg Caro at this point right now is in a runoff. Um, we hope, we wish him the best. Um, the two at Lodges, Tom Wilmont, no opposition, another friend. And then uh, Maria DeFrancis was um, defeated by Christy McKinney, who, has, who also is another good friend. Um, and, and good civic activist, very, very involved. Working mother, mm -hmm. um, hard working young lady. So you think there'll be a lot of cohesion among this group? Yeah, and you know, we really had that with five, five, sometimes six council members. Um, but I, I feel like you're gonna have a different direction now mm -hmm. where we just don't need, because I present something or maybe one other council person presents something that there's one there that just says no all the time just because they don't, because of personality conflicts. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel like you're gonna have that now. I feel really well with the direction that the city's going. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about some of the projects uh, that I know you're going to be focusing on. And uh, let's talk, if we could, about what's happening at the, uh, the Pavilion mm -hmm. and the Esplanade, maybe starting at the Pavilion. Pavilion, you know, and it, it's almost funny because you have to listen. If you look at Facebook and Next Door Neighbor, which I do post something every day, but it, it's, it's almost comical because there's the naysayers that just say, well, what's, what's happening, what's happening? You know, it didn't become an issue until election time or until I became the mayor because I made it the issue. I brought upon the issue that is, that's being used against me throughout the campaign. We went out there and we did the 88, found the 88 code violations. We did the code sweep, mm -hmm. which ignited the basically, hey, do something or we're gonna tear you down. I've seen a progress that I've never seen before at the pavilion. It's not gonna happen in a year. It's gonna take more time than that. But there's some people that are just negative about everything right. that it's not happening quick enough. I believe you're gonna see a lot going on. Today's Tuesday, tomorrow there's a, a meeting at one o'clock that a local person is meeting with someone out there. I can't say who it is yet. Right. But they're looking at taking over the Rouse's area in that strip next to at home. We've looked at things that we can do out there, mixed with the real estate agent and the owner. So I, I feel good about it. But, and we discussed this on the radio show, this is happening all over the country. I mean, this is, right. a, this is a problem that is, that is worse in, in many areas. Right. Mandeville has got a real problem with uh, major uh, areas uh, being vacant. They've got to figure out what to do. You know, when we go to forums, we, went, we just go to civic meetings throughout the year, when people say, what are y'all doing about the pavilion at Esplanade Mall? First thing is, we can only do so much because right. just like in your business, you don't want government to come in and tell you how to run it. However, we can assist and help those businesses what they might need help from us with. Besides defending it with that, I also ask the major question, how do you, the group, shop right now? Majority of that group, whenever you're talking to people, say, well, I do it online. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you want us to do? Yes, it does work at Lakeside Shopping Center. It does work on areas in veterans right. in District 5 of the parish. But it doesn't always work in every area because online shopping has been a curse. And While and it's look, good, it's been a curse. Look at what's going on with Toys R Us. It's Toys R Us throughout the country, Sears probably throughout most of the country. Yeah, I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. there's a changing, there's a trend now that's not, people don't want to really go into, the, into all the malls and all that. Elmwood works. You know, Hammond Square works because you pull right up to it. Mm -hmm. That's something I think we need to look at also at the Esplanade Mall to change that. And we are working with two developers there. And let's talk about the Esplanade Mall. I mean, well before you arrived, I mean, that mall was struggling. 
I mean, up and down. And, and on this program, we've interviewed right. many different people that have been sort of uh, leading efforts to try to revitalize it. So what's the current status over right. there? Uh, again, it's only becoming an issue during this administration because mm -hmm. we're making it the issue. Mm -hmm. um, we're taking that on. I said during the race, upgrade or uproot. I'm, I'm happy to announce I think they're going to uproot because they have not taken that next step. But there is a local developer and an out-of-state developer that's looking at that. Actually, the bank has flown in to, again today being Tuesday to meet with some people tomorrow because we're staying on those things. They're meeting with those developers to see what they can do. Mm -hmm. That has to be a city center. It has to have commerce. The Macy's building could be turned into some type of an office building or maybe upscale condos, I don't know. Or maybe there's something there for City Hall. There are things that we can look at, put restaurants around it in that ring road, more coffee shops, health care, mm -hmm. the movie theater's there, and also Target. And Dillard's actually works. Even though some people right. don't like the Dillard's, it works. You get that going, the mm -hmm. walkability, there's a future in the next couple of years. Uh, sort of like a community center, maybe? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You, you know, <clears throat> you and I are past this, but our kids mm -hmm. and our grandkids don't really want to have to have three cars. They like having just one or two cars, mm -hmm. and they like to be able to walk to everything and live and shop, eat, and entertain themselves where they are. That might be the future of Esplanade Mall. Mm -hmm. Just like when you look at the lakefront, it might be the future there too. Right. So what do you think the timeline is going to be uh, with this group that's uh, yeah. running it right now? Look, I, I tell you, don't look for anything before probably Christmas, mm -hmm. but I think after Christmas you're going to see some things starting to happen between now and Christmas. Mm -hmm. And the, you have to go through the construction or the deconstruction phase, mm -hmm. deconstruction first and then construction phase of making that to where we need it to be. I feel over the next four years, you're going to see a difference there and the Pavilion Shopping mm -hmm. Center, hopefully within the next two years, but it takes right. time to build. As long as the people of Kansas see that the building is coming, I believe they'll be happy. Because that is an immense facility, right? It, I mean, it's, it is. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not a cheap facility. No. I mean, it's, it's something that you have to get the right backers to, de to invest right. in that and develop it to the next, next um, phase. It's built in like 1981, 82. Right. Things have changed since then. The access to the mall is the mo not the most convenient. Mm -hmm. You know, Lakeside's a little right. bit different the way it's laid out. You don't have to walk so long from the parking lot. Those are the things that have to be addressed. Exactly. And correct. I feel like it will. I mean, I remember it was, I mean, so popular <clears throat> right after it was built, but things change, as you say. I mean, look at exactly. in the East, look how popular Lake Forest used to be. It was, it was the place to go when right. I was a kid. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. things are different. And, and right. the climate's changing, the way things the way people think and the way people shop and buy, mm -hmm. it's all changing. But we have to adapt to that. We have to make something where it's a focal point interesting for them to come. But as you say, some of the ingredients are there because the theater is doing so well because there can be some, I think, feed off of that, right? Had Macy's not closed mm -hmm. when this new company took over, which I think that's what they thought was a bit dwell on. You had Target, you had Dillard's, you had the movie theater, and you had Macy's. You had what would make it work in the inside. When Macy's shut its stores, again, probably a few stores nationwide, it affected the whole operation that Pacific Realty mm -hmm. wanted to do. No fault to them, but it just hasn't worked. So we right. have to move it to the next phase, and I believe that's what we can do working with these developers. And are you worried, looking at the struggles that they've had as far as revenue coming into the city? Absolutely. It's affected our revenue. Mm -hmm. um, up until probably Christmas of last year, though, that's when a mall was actually producing some revenue because of Target, because of Dillard's, because of the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Since Christmas, they didn't have a good Christmas, they declined, and that has helped hurt us even worse. Right. The Vivian Shopping Center not being open. Across the street, where the other property is behind CVS, not being really filled. Mm -hmm. Those things are hurting. However, in one year, we have granted 380, 390 occupational licenses, which shows people are moving in and opening businesses or home businesses, and we've done over 30 ribbon cuttings. That's not a dying city that needs right. medicine, like some people said during the race. Mm -hmm. That is a progressing city because we had those other facilities opening up at Williams and Joe Yenny on West Esplanade by the old mm -hmm. Redwood Apartments and other areas. So we are moving on. So budget-wise, from all these new businesses coming in, is it sort of making up for the struggles it's, that they're having? It, it's helping. Mm -hmm. it, it's definitely helping. Um, we have a lot of other things. You know, the, the road bond millage will, will actually be paid. It was paid off last December 31st. Mm -hmm. Those are new revenues that come in to the 31st of this year. 
which will produce some revenue that we can actually put into our roads and not take out of our right. capital improvement projects. All right, let's talk about some of those issues when we come back. Sure. We'll take a brief time out here visiting with uh, Mayor Zahn on Louisiana Business Spotlight. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here with the Mayor of Kenner, Ben Zahn. And uh, Mayor, thanks for being with us. Pleasure to be here. Talking about some of the uh, infrastructure projects uh, coming up over the next uh, few weeks and months, uh, what are some of the ones you're really excited about? So we're going into our capital budget right now. Uh, it's something that the council has to pass sometime in May or at least by June. There's a lot to address in the city of Kenner. Um, of course, our capital projects, public works, really come from the Treasure Chest Casino, the money we receive there to go to the districts, which is citywide projects. I guess the one that's basically that we won't fund, but we have to keep an eye on, is anything dealing with the airport, the flyover, relocation of the fire station of Loyola, which is extremely important, just came from the state today, expressing them how important that is, and making sure we secure those Garvey bonds for that flyover and make sure that they realize that fire station has to be moved. That helps our ratings to keep that. Mm -hmm. we can't, we can't hurt our ratings. So you think there's <clears> some <throat> consensus about that? I think it is. I mean, I, I kind of dropped the bombshell today, and they, they were kind of like, okay, wait, I've got to make sure the fire station's in there. I'm like, I've been, I've been preaching that. And look, we get a lot of good help from Joe Stagney, mm -hmm. uh, Julie Stokes, Danny Martini, and also Gary Smith, the ones that are representing the city of Kenner. Right. But they get it. Uh, we just have to go back again Monday and Tuesday and stress that a little bit more when it goes to the committee. So a lot of work is going on at the airport right now. It's a lot going on at the airport. And, and look, I'm not anti-airport, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not pro-traffic. So we got to make sure that they understand the state, not our state reps, not our state senators, but the state understands as a whole, we like the progress at the airport, but not at the expense of our residents. Mm -hmm. Because it could be a, a cluster of traffic. So we've got one city representative on the aviation board? Currently we do not. Um, I have requested um, three names, I've submitted three names. Okay. Obviously you request one of those three. Um, Latoya Cantrell, Mayor-elect Cantrell and I have spoken a few times along with Mayor Landrew. And I think we're gonna wait until um, Latoya comes in and work that out and get our person on there. Okay. Mr. Hudson, Jim Hudson was the appointment. Mm -hmm. He moved out of town. He did a great job, but he had to move out of town. Right. So we need, we need to fill Time that Time for appointment. someone new. Well, we need to. I was fine with him, right. but he moved out of town. Now we have to put somebody new. We have no choice. Okay. And you've got some good people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, another interesting development going on up in the legislature involves the uh, Riverboat Casinos. Absolutely. So tell us about how <laughs> these changes could affect uh, the treasure chest. I think it would be for the good. Mm -hmm. um, anytime you get a land-based casino, and, and look, it's not that I'm pro-gambling, but I'm pro-capital improvements. Our money, our capital money comes from that. The, more, the bigger that they are without affecting our residents, which they won't, the more money we get. Because it said $2 per head that's coming in that we're getting that money from and also from the parking lot. So it will attract more people mm -hmm. into that casino. As you see, Harris has not been a nightmare. Other ones have not been a nightmare. It's right. worked in Mississippi. They've moved it onto land, right. it's not becoming a problem. Now, we don't want a whole stretch of casinos out in the lakefront, mm -hmm. but we would like something that's land-based that actually complements condos, river, right. uh, Develop. a boardwalk, right. restaurants out there also. That's the future of the city of Kenner, right. is Lake Town, the only undeveloped area, basically. So, you have a good sense of the legislature. What do you think is gonna be happening up there? You think there's support for this? I, I think there's support for it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a shame we didn't get full support on a resolution that Councilman Mike Segura submitted to the um, to the Kenna Council to send to the state. It was a 5-2 vote, unfortunately, but we would like to see that 7-0. Mm -hmm. But those five council people understand, the major super majority of the council understand that that's something that's best for the city of Kenner and also for Lake Town. Yeah, and I would assume all these other cities around the state that have these Riverboat casinos feel the same way. Yeah, and, and you see them growing throughout the state. Right. I mean, you got Tangipahoa right now, mm -hmm. you know, the parish president out there asking for his own riverboat. It's something that mm -hmm. they understand, and all parish leaders, all city leaders understand that is where your revenue is going to come from. As it's declining, like we talked about a little bit before, right. with sales tax, we need some other type of 
income, some other kind of revenue. And the treasure chest is also funding the police department, right? Yes, that's a whole separate contract that funds that. So that's a lot, that's a good point. That's a lot of capital improvements that go directly to our Canada Police Department right. that we don't always have that money to send to the police department. Mm. The council, my administration do its best We've only had one budget that, we've, that this administration's been through. Mm -hmm. But historically, the council does its best to make sure that that budget for the Kenna Police Department is where it needs to be for Chief Carraway in the past, Chief Congemi, and now mm -hmm. Chief Glazer. So you're really bullish on the future of Lake Town? Oh, yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, look, it's my old, it's where I live. Not Lake Town, but I live in District 3. Mm -hmm. It's my old district. It's where I started with my government service. And I know how important that is. Nothing has been built in District 3 slash, I'm sorry, in Lake Town District 3 in at least six years. Some, since the fishing pier that myself and at the time, Mayor Munez built, mm -hmm. something needs to get going in Lake Town. It's a shame that it's been stale for that long. Let's talk, if we could, about Rivertown, which is where we are uh, exactly. filming this. And um, there have been some new sort of activities here. Sure. You know, I came in, the aesthetics in Rivertown were kind of declining. I sat with Councilman Carroll, he does a great job out here, and I said, look, there's some small things we can do. We did a lot of painting, we did a lot of sidewalk improvement. There's a lot more that has to be addressed. But you see what's starting to happen. We have porch and patio building down the street. We have Florida Lily right here. We have Jindusas that has done excellent. We have the coffee shop right across the street by the old Labellas. We have Labellas slash the crossing now. Those things are all coming together. Those are all run by good, good business people that are doing the best that they can. I feel all that area is going to, all those people in that area, those businesses are going to help generate what else has been stale out here for a while. Could there be opportunity for more events out here? Uh, absolutely. You know, we lost um, Oktoberfest because, you know, lucky for them, bad for us, right. they bought their own property out there and they're opening that up. But, you know, we have Italian Heritage Festival coming up again mm -hmm. uh, in about two or three weeks. Um, we're looking at doing some other festivals out here, and we just keep trying to push as much as we can. We had Lundy Grow not too long ago, not too long ago. Um, those are the things we need to build on some of those. I'd love to have another type of October fest, other not to compete with them, but some other things else around October, November that would help draw some more people. Yeah, and that's a great time of the year. Absolutely, it's nice and cool. And this area, I think, is conducive for those sorts of events. It is. It's a lot of history out here. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about something that uh, a lot of people are excited about, and that's CarMax. Yes. yes. And um, I know we don't have all the details finalized. <clears throat> it, it will be something that will generate numerous jobs. Um, it, it's been a little delayed in coming because we had some things we had to work through uh, with the previous administration mm -hmm. and also this administration with CarMax. But, you know, you have CarMax coming. Right next to it, you have the Lincoln dealership coming, uh, Ronnie Lamarck's dealership. And when people say, oh, it's another used car lot, it's not. It's CarMax. It's, it's like going onto a real car lot mm -hmm. and buying a good, you know, pre-owned vehicle. Ronnie Lamarck will have his adjacent to that. Like I said before, there is a lot of building going on in the city of Kenna. Mm -hmm. Property tax, sales tax, those are the things that are going to help compensate. Because you, I guess you could buy a car online, mm -hmm. but you really choose to go actually see the car. Those are the things we have to um, attract. And that's going to be also a significant number of jobs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, the jobs that will come in that area. And I hope that that helps. That's that corridor coming into the Esplanade Mall, mm -hmm. which, like I said before, I don't know what the mall is going to be in the future. But no matter what, it's a corridor coming into that development. So that will actually be good, too, which might help generate some other property there that might be bought, purchased, and put into uh, retail. So commerce. you feel pretty good about Kenner being a destination for business. Absolutely. It's just, you know, it's been a while since you've had a businessman actually run the city of Kenner and be the chief executive officer. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm not saying I'm the best businessman right. that there is, but I think I'm a pretty good one. Um, I think surrounded with the council that we have coming in, mm -hmm. our chief of police, people want to feel safe. Chief Glazer does a great job making sure that's done. Um, our fire department, led by our chief right now, our fire chief right now, Ryan Bergeron, he's doing a great job putting the fires out. Mm -hmm. um, people feel confident with what you have. You have a good police department, fire department, public works, everything else falls into place. 
And we've had a lot of business owners on this program tell us that it's easy to do business in Kenner. I mean, the permitting process, the, the city government's there to work with them. So you, be you don't have that in all areas around here. You got to be business friendly. And mm -hmm. that's what I stress to this administration. And they get it. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're surrounded with some good top administrators, too. I mean, I have Deborah Foshi from the parish working as my CEO and Chris Fortunato is my deputy CEO from the right. parish. We, we, we have it going on pretty good. We have a great legal department led by Lee Roussel, who's been here for 12 or 13 years. We're doing a good job. So as this starts developing more and more, do you see the population starting to grow in Kenner? Yeah, and we do have some areas that we can still put some people into. Mm -hmm. Louisiana Trace, um, there's some vacant property also still in Loyola. You know, God knows what those will be, but there might be upscale apartments, upscale condos, where people are starting to put that trend, that the trend is going toward and people want that. And finally, as you look toward uh, these next four years, do you have like a number one goal that you're going to be focused on? I, I think it's a dealing with the blighted shopping centers and putting that and increasing our sales tax. Everyone pays sales tax. No one should have to pay more property tax. And that's what I've always said. Property tax is something you don't really want to fool with. You want to fool with more increasing the sales tax base. You have to pay sales tax. Not everybody pays property tax. Right. So don't penalize one group which are our residents slash our citizens. Let's go after everybody who comes in here and purchases something and increase the sales tax base. You know, I'm sure you go to conferences with other mayors. Mm -hmm. It's probably a hot topic. Yeah, everybody has the same cry. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the same story. Everybody has the same cry. And it's, right. you know, it's, it's, um, it's upsetting, but you got to deal with it. So let's increase it as much as we can. Right. And let's be a better Kenner tomorrow and keep Kendall proud. All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right, when we come back, some good news stories in our local environment here on Louisiana Business Spotlight. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now some good news in our local business world. AxoSim was founded to help find new drugs to treat neurodegenerative diseases like ALS. The company developed a so-called nerve on a chip technology that allows scientists to test the effects of drugs that they can have on people in the lab. Now the effort was bolstered as the company won the Coulter Idea Pitch and a $100,000 investment toward the next round of funding during New Orleans Entrepreneur Week. So congratulations to them. AlertG, which is a real-time blood glucose monitoring and alert system that works through a smartphone application, well, they won too. They won $36,000 during the New Orleans Health Innovators Challenge, which was focused on finding uh, startups nationwide that are developing new technology to innovate diabetes care. Diabetes remains one of the leading causes of death in Louisiana. About 521,000 people in Louisiana have the disease, or 13.9% of the overall adult population. And finally, a New Orleans-based software and service company, Align, said that it had landed nearly 2.2 million in funding and plans to hire up to 30 people over the next 15 to 20 months. The company plans to hire across software development, project management, marketing, and sales positions for its cloud-based business operating system. So congratulations to them. All right, folks, if you have any ideas or comments about topics or potential guests, please contact me at jcruer at gmail.com. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jeff Cruer, and I'll see you next time for another edition of Louisiana Business Spotlight.